bad times for me. Don't go around at night. It's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out the Credence Clearwater Revival Classic. There's a bad moon on the rise. Now, I'm doing a kind of a beginner version to start you off here for stage one beginners. That means that you only know A, D, and E chord. And in order to do that, we need a capo or capo at the fifth fret. Okay, now there's a few good and bad things about playing up at the fifth fret. First of all, the frets are a little bit more narrow. Okay, so that makes it a little bit harder, particularly like the A chord, to get all your fingers there in the fret. Now, that makes it harder, but however, if you give it a bit of practice up here and your fingers are all squashed up together, when you go back down to the open position to play those chords, it's a lot easier because you've got a lot more space and you'll find it easier to bunch the chords up. So sometimes it's a really good idea to be playing, you know, up around the fifth fret. Seventh fret or higher is starting to get a little bit too tight. It's still possible uh, and it can be good practice, but it's considerably harder beyond that. So fifth fret's not too bad, but you will find it a little bit squashy. I'm going to show you a, a, a more like the original version as well using uh, the chords uh, D, A and G, which I think is what uh, is the way the original recording is done. But let's start off by having a look at this one. So I always recommend that beginners start with really simple strumming and make sure that you get the chord changes nice and smooth without any gaps between them before you start worrying about using a particular strumming pattern. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the chords for this one now. So we'd start with an A chord for a whole bar. So one, two, three, four on the A. Then we change to an E chord for two strums, then to D for two strums, and then we've got two bars on A. So that'll be eight strums all together on the A. Okay, that sequence again. So A, two, three, four, E to D, and back to A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again that sequence. So A, two, three, four, E to D, to A. Two, Now the song's quite a lot a bit faster than that, so what you're going to have to work on now is trying to speed that up until you can get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the sort of thing you're after. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A chord and E to D is A chord. A chord to E to D to A. To D chord down tonight for two bars. Well, it's A chord for two bars, and then E for a bar, then D for a bar, back to A for two bars. Chorus again. D chord down. That's for two bars. Well, it's A chord for two bars, and then one bar of E to a bar of D on the A. Okay, so that would be first stages. Working on those chord changes, making sure that you can just do it nice and simple, four down strums to the bar, and see if you can work your way up to the tempo that you could play along with the original recording. Again, playing along with the original recording is a great thing to do because you'll start to cop there what we call a time feel because it's not always, strumming's not mathematical. It kind of wobbles a bit in a very human way and that's what makes it kind of feel nice and the, one of the ways that we kind of relate to different musics. I digress. So that's the first stages, trying to get that down, see if you can get it along with the original recording like that with the simple strumming. But once you're through that simple strumming, you want to play it a little bit more interesting, you want to add some up strums after the three and after the four. So you end up with this pattern that's going one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Up. And again, if you're trying to work on your rhythm playing, a great thing to do is to mute the strings so you've got nothing going on and practice doing that strumming pattern. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And even doing that along with the original recordings, really good thing to practice because you're not worried and constrained about the chord changes then. And you can really sit there trying to make it feel nice. 
because it's a lot of it's about making it feel really good, you know, and enjoying it. You know, T try not to let yourself tense up. Try and keep it nice and relaxed. And, and taking away the pressure of doing the chord changes is a really great way of opening that rhythm up. So do have a go at doing that. And then when you're ready, try putting the two together. Again, you want to start a little bit slower. Always, if something's a bit difficult, to slow it down, it becomes easier. So if we take that main sequence, we might start with it doing this. One, two, three, and four, and one. before you go anywhere near the proper tempo. Make sure you're solid at that speed. And again, I'll just mention uh, some people are still asking about the upstroke after four. Okay, so whenever you've got that last up strum after four on the and after four, if you've got a chord change there, very often that's open string. So in this case on the A, it'll be, if I slow it right down, sounds a bit weird, but this is what you'd have would be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, Again, you've got those open strings, which sounds a bit weird at this speed, but once you're at tempo, you don't notice it at all. So don't freak out if you if you notice that you're doing that. Oh God, I'm doing it all wrong. You're not, it's fine. It's like it on the original recording as well. So once you feel really confident with all of that and you've worked it up to speed, definitely be playing along with the original recording with that new strumming pattern as well. That's gonna really change it because it's so much more fun to be playing that kind of strumming pattern along with the original. You'll really start to feel part of the track. And when you've nailed that, now you might be wanting to think about doing some other stuff. And probably to be in all honesty, if you're getting to the point where you can play that along with the record, you're probably beyond stage one of your guitar. And hopefully you've learned a bit about your G chord. So. Once you know your G chord, we can actually play exactly the same chords now without the capo. You're really just changing over some of the chords. And I've mentioned it in the songbook. Instead of playing an A chord, you would play a D open chord. Instead of playing an E chord, you would play an A chord. And instead of playing a D chord, you play a G chord. So you could either just write yourself a new chart or write in a different colored pen, maybe above the chart if you've got the songbook there in front of you. And you would end up with D, A, G, D. That's, it's exactly the same sound, just without the capo. D, A, G, D. Into the chorus, we go to G. Don't go out And then it's D to take your life. A is the G chord on the D. Okay, and then you can start to play about with your sus chords and there's lots of other things you can do. There's a, always more ways of exploring these songs, which I think is a great thing if you can learn a song really in a beginner way and then as you develop as a guitar player, you can start to add in different things. You can look at different strumming patterns, accent passages, like where you're gonna strum harder and where you're gonna strum softer. Sus chords there, I was just playing a little bit of a sus four on the D chord that was a little bit interesting, probably not on the record, but you're allowed to experiment with that sort of stuff and I think that's part of the fun. So I uh, hope you enjoy playing this tune. I'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for the mailing list on the website. I'll see you very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.